thank you for listening homosexuality hinduism's philosophical triumph in the west and i this is series is called bible as revolution with vishal mangalwadi that's my name i'm a writer and i have the honor of having harvest tv uh, bless on who is working on uh, cameras and technology and jerry puvakala who is uh, with me uh, to uh, the first presentation that we made about an hour long to understand that and apply it to India. So, Jerry is here uh, speaking on behalf of Indian viewers of Harvest TV. Uh, they also have the channel in the USA, so you will be able to watch it on the Harvest channel. Uh, thank you once again. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Vishal Mangalwadi. So, I'll go directly to the question. Okay, 74 years of independence, uh, morality has remained faithful to the colonialist. So, both the uh, right and uh, left parties in BJP and communist has publicly uh, stated same-sex marriage is an import of foreigners and will destroy the Indian values. Uh, my question is, uh, you are saying that homosexual went from Hinduism, they are saying that same-sex marriage is an import of foreigners. So, both are contradictory and what is your uh, statement for it? Thank uh, you. Yeah. Uh, you are absolutely right mm -hmm. that there are two contradictory mm -hmm. statements yes. here that uh, as education system the modern education system in India came with the British. Now, the East India Company was not educating, but East India Company was required because of what the evangelicals had done in the parliament led by William Wilberforce. The parliament required in 1813 that East India Company should spend 1 lakh of rupees like 1 lakh uh, pounds at that time in public education. The missionaries had already begun educating uh, with mission resources, educating India, both at the school level and the universities, but then East India Company formally began to educate. So, the entire modern education system in India was built by Christians. Now, at that time, even in England or in America, if you were a teacher, a professor, you had to be a reverend, an ordained minister, you have had to study theology, because education was church's attempt to disciple nations, teach them about God's kingdom. You cannot have the kingdom of God, you cannot have God's will being done, unless people know who God is, what his will is. So, church was educating India. Th that included writing textbooks, writing novels, fiction, etc., transforming Indian vernacular into modern Indian languages through the Bible translation. So, Bible translation created all of modern Indian languages. The only languages that already existed were Persian was the court language of the uh, Mughal Empire. You had Arabic, which was being taught in madrasas because Quran was in Arabic and then you had Sanskrit which was taught to Brahman males in Hindu ashrams by the um, gurus. So, you had those three languages Sanskrit, Arabic and Persian. All other languages which were the hard languages of illiterate people, they were turned into literary languages by Bible translators. So, it is true that the Bible had a huge impact on the intellectual life of India, the, all the educated class. So, it's then some of our finest uh, people such as Mahatma Gandhi and Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru etc. went to England to study. At back then, uh, the English morality was also biblical morality. So, these people came, Dr. Bhim Rao Ambedkar was the first uh, lower caste Hindu who came to America to study economics, then went to England to study law and 
all of this is economic ideas and legal ideas are shaped by the Bible. So, that began to create the morality and laws in India and that is what you are saying that uh, many Hindus are upset that for 74 years since independence, we have continued to allow Christianity, the Bible to shape our understanding of what is moral. Is it immoral for a man to have more than one wife? Mm -hmm. Is it immoral for a man to abandon his wife or should she be legally divorced like Mahatma Gandhi can abandon his wife or a God can, his wife is pregnant with twins, he can just abandon her and she has no recourse, legal recourse uh, uh, about it because or the brothers Pandavas, they can gamble their wife away. So, they are married to Draupadi and they are gambling Yudhishthira and Duryodhan, the leader of Pandavas and Kauravs, they are gambling and when he has lost everything, he gambles his wife away. Is wife your property that you can gamble her away? Uh, and you do not have to give a divorce certificate. So, Duryodhan can strip her in public. Is stripping a woman in public who now is your property, is this good or bad, moral, moral, immoral? So, you are right that there was Hindu morality where man owned his wife and could uh, do with her what she like, he likes. But all of this changed because the Bible began to educate India. Mm. But as the West rejected the Bible as the foundation of education, foundation of morality, so officially the Supreme Court of uh, America asked the Ten Commandments be removed from public places. Mm. So, as the West abandoned the Bible, it had a problem. And that problem was how do we understand sex now? The Bible had said that God made us in his image male and female to be one. Therefore, a man should leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife and the two of them will become one flesh not to be separated until death do us part. This was part of Christian marriage. Is this moral or is this attempt of the priests? To, uh, re, uh, to control our sex lives. Darwinian idea came, so th uh, I need to explain this which I did not do in the main lecture, that sexual revolution and the homosexual revolution are related, but they are different. Sexual revolution came to the west through Darwin's idea that human beings are animals, animals do not marry why do we have to be married, why do we have to honor marriage vows. That led that we are animals to Freud, we discussed him, uh, Sigmund Freud, the father of psychoanalysis. Freud saying uh, that sex should not be replaced. A, a girl is attracted to her father, father is sleeping with the mother, the girl feels upset, should she repress her fantasies about her father or should the father have sex with her. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of what is happening in western pornography, western culture is that yes, fathers should have sex with their daughters and mothers should have sex with their sons uh, and bro brother and sisters should have sex, F family uh, should be a place where sex is expressed, not repressed. This is the impact of Sigmund Freud. Uh, which um, was a, a sort of pseudo scientific support came through Kinsey report, which was studying sexuality, but there is plenty of evidence that this was pseudo scientific, uh, this was not genuine uh, sociological study of the sex life in the West. But following the Kinsey report, which is taking Freud's view further, you had playboy empire, Hugh Hefner had a mansion in Los Angeles near Hollywood, where uh, 
every month he is publishing a magazine with topless women. So, Christians would not buy those magazines because of the topless women, uh, you cannot be quoting those magazines, but every issue of uh, Playboy had a serious pseudo scientific article. So, it was intellectuals mm -hmm. justifying Freudian uh, ideology. ideology of sexual liberation. So, it was Playboy empire mm -hmm. which for 50 years took the sexual liberation to the people. And as I argue in one of my books that what began to happen is the earlier education meant boys becoming men, boys taking responsibility for the women they love, for the children they bring into the womb and into the world. That is becoming man, that you take responsibility for the person you love. But opposite began to happen as a result of this naturalistic view of sexuality that sex is an animal instinct, we should be free to indulge in it. Um, and then men became boys. So, what the playboy was doing was turning American men into boys, mm -hmm. that you play around with women, do not take responsibility for them. When men become boys, women become desperate housewives. Now, that is a famous uh, television serial in America, desperate housewives, because men have become boys. They are no longer taking responsibility for their women and their children. So, the corruption of culture began to happen, but the great problem with this sexual revolution was that sex became meaningless, like drinking a cup of coffee that you are sleeping with a woman. It has no meaning, but everyone intuitively felt that there is something wrong with this. Human sex is not like animal sex. We want meaning, we want purpose, we do not mate, we make love. Animals mate, we, human beings make love. So, what is love? Is it just chemistry? or is it something spiritual in us? If we love and then we begin to hate the same person and we separate and we divorce and we get start loving third person, fourth person etcetera. So, the reducing human sexuality to the level of animals made sex meaningless. This is where Hinduism stepped in. And what the Tantra is saying, what Rajneesh is saying, that no, 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 your sex is not an animal sex. Your sex is path to God, Godhood. You can become God, you can become divine. So, what Swami Muktananda is doing in Ganeshpuri in Bombay, or what um, uh, Satya Sai Baba is doing in his ashrams, he is initiating people like Muktananda's language was he is purifying your chakras by playing with your genitals, he is purifying your chakras. So, Hinduism became attractive because it suddenly now gave meaning to sex. Mm -hmm. That meaning was that through sex you become God mm. through sexual mysticism. So, uh, your question is correct that Christianity brought what is perceived as middle class morality mm -hmm. in India. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a middle class morality which is verbalized. Mahatma Gandhi in his autobiography, he writes that he was initiated into sex by his sister in law mm -hmm. as a young boy. This was very common that a young girl 11, 12, 13 year old, she is married, she does not know what is sex, nobody has taught her. She goes, she is initiated, she, her husband has sex with her, she comes back to her mother's home and now she is playing around with sex with boys in the village. This is very typical. Uh, so, the idea that sex is sacred, that this is, uh, you have, it is limited to be marriage. Its purpose is not just to procreate or have fun, its purpose is to create a godly offspring, young people, children who will grow up 
to learn from their fathers, mothers, uncles, aunts, grandparents, the culture to establish their dominion over the earth. So, if, if family is not taking responsibility for educating children, nurturing children, then children uh, are basically wandering, looking after cows and goats and buffaloes and uh, harvesting and sowing etc. Uh, they are not establishing their dominion because the intellectual life is not being developed. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so both things have happened. On the one hand, the Bible had a huge impact in transforming mm -hmm. the middle class morality on India, which continues. Mm -hmm. the, the Bible gave us our legal system. So, Lord Macaulay mm -hmm. wrote the legal system, but uh, Hinduism on the other hand stepped, uh, impacted the West. Mm -hmm because Darwinian evolution and the playboy culture made sex meaningless. Mm. Hinduism offered, gave a meaning to sex that you can use tantric sex, sexual mysticism to become God. <laughs> well, so um, oh, let us go to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court um, is a uh, now prepare, uh, preparing to throw out uh, this 1867 era section 377 um, that was uh, criminalizing the homosexual. But now it is changing to decriminalize uh, because and I, I, I'm sure I'm, I'm very clear that the India's sexual more changing once again. So uh, uh, um, oh, what do you say? Well, uh, uh, unfortunately that is true mm -hmm. that uh, 1860s Indian Penal Code mm -hmm. was actually drafted in yes. 1840s yes. by Lord Macaulay, Macaulay. Um, and then uh, the uh, 1857 uh, revolt came mm -hmm. and it could not actually become the law, mm -hmm. but uh, it became the law. And that law which was called sodomy law was uh, a biblical law that uh, sex is for building family mm -hmm. in a, a permanent love relationship between a man and a woman who produce children. Together they look after children, nurture children, build them up. That is the purpose, but homosexuality uh, or sex with animals, in Khajuraho temples you have both mm -hmm. uh, homosexual act depicted, you have sex with animals mm -hmm. depicted. Uh, and the Indian Penal Code, which was the biblical idea of sex, was saying that this is sin. So, of course, the code does not use the language of sin, it uses the language of crime. This is crime. So, uh, th th that law was Bible's law, but as the Western law, mm -hmm. which was built upon the Ten Commandments and upon Justinian Code, etc. Uh, uh, as the American legal system changed, now India is, has a problem that are we going to go back to find a legal system which is based upon our scriptures? Are we going to build a legal system which is based upon the Bible or Sharia or are we going to follow, uh, have our legal system shaped by the West? Mm -hmm. Now, this is not a peculiar problem of the BJP or Hindutva. It was Mrs. Sonia Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi who first publicly championed same-sex marriage. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the BJP in fact res resisted the idea, at least in public utterances, uh, they resisted the idea. Even the uh, communists resisted. Uh, the com com communists resisted. Mm -hmm. So, uh, essentially you cannot build sexual ethics or law upon nature. Mm -hmm. All morality is restraining nature. I feel like killing you. Mm -hmm. Should I? Because this is my feeling. Or I like, feel like having sex with a man or having sex with an animal. Should I? All morality is restraining my carnal nature, my sinful nature that I should not be lying even though I feel like lying. I should not be bearing false witness. I should not be coveting my neighbor's mangoes or property or car or whatever. Uh, I feel like coveting, but I should not. So, morality is 
submitting human nature to God's word that is translated into law uh, because morality can be personal in my heart I hate somebody I should not be hating I should be loving but law cannot judge my heart law can judge when I actually go and kill someone so that is criminalized mm -hmm. but Jesus says if you hate someone you are already murdered so that's sin because in your heart you have violated God's command that you must love your neighbor as yourself. So uh, law is reflected, uh, morality, morality is reflected in law mm -hmm. and India has now this terrible problem mm -hmm. that how do we shape the future of our law? Mm -hmm. Do we continue to operate on the Bible's view of morality? Mm -hmm and tr translate that into legal system or we go back to Hindu scriptures or we follow the West. So, Indian Supreme Court and Indian intellectuals and including Mrs. Sonia Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi are choosing to follow the foolishness of the West. That is our problem. Okay. So, uh, since you talked about Tandra and all, uh, you might know. Uh, how are yoga and tantra uh, related? Uh, we hear uh, terrible things about Akhuris, uh, uh, scary. Uh, so, uh, can you explain a little bit uh, more about yes. this tantra and yoga? Yes. And uh, also Akhuris. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, perhaps uh, we, we need a full session mm -hmm. on yoga, mm -hmm. uh, independent session. Mm -hmm and go deeper into yoga and tantra but uh, i did mention tantra mm -hmm. that uh, a lot of uh, this beginning with swami mm -hmm. vivekananda mm -hmm. it is tantric hinduism mm -hmm. which has come to america mm -hmm. and which has a very strong sexual component mm -hmm. and occult mm -hmm. component mm -hmm. that's what has come and uh, but uh, during vivekananda time he came to chicago first parliament of world religions in 1893. So, at that time tantra was a dirty word. Yes. So, absolutely. when we were growing up tantra was a dirty word. Yes. Our mothers if they want us to behave they will say do not go out alone on the streets because they are tantrics, tantrics. were uh, kidnapping children mm -hmm. uh, because human sacrifice was very common in India. You could not build a big building or a bridge or a dam without sacrificing a human being. Mm -hmm. And this was done by tantrics and at mm -hmm. night. Mm -hmm. So, you the kidnap, kids will be kidnapped and, uh, and this was also common and you often read about it that a couple is not able to have a child mm -hmm. and the tantric will say that you kidnap a neighbor's child, you sacrifice the child, then you will be able to conceive. So, this happens today, uh, but this was very much part of the culture. Uh, so, uh, both yoga and tantra were dirty words in India when we were growing up as kids. It began to change particularly when Mrs. Indra Gandhi adopted uh, Yogi Brahmachari mm -hmm. as her personal yoga mm -hmm. trainer. Mm -hmm. Now, she is sitting on her desk long hours, back would hurt uh, because earlier women would be digging and drawing water from the well and they would be exercising, mm -hmm. but now you have a clerical kind of administrative work, you are sitting too much, you are not getting exercise. So, you need the exercise of muscles because yoga grew up mm -hmm. and I will explain this in another session uh, because 50 years ago everyone was cycling, walking, chopping, chopping wood, yes. drawing water. Um, planting potatoes, dig, uh, harvesting, these were all exercises. They were physically active. You're f uh, rowing a boat, mm -hmm. you don't need mm -hmm. to d d d exercise. exercise, you're walking. Mm -hmm. But once you get a job where you are driving mm -hmm. to the office, sitting the whole day, then you need the muscle. Now, in ancient India, the only people who were not working were the gurus, mm -hmm. the ascetics who were sitting in caves, sitting under a tree, sitting in their uh, homes meditating. Naturally, the back will hurt, muscles will hurt. Now, they had the need to exercise their muscles. They also had the leisure to understand 
what exercise helps this better and what exercise helps the stomach better and etcetera. So, they had both the need because they were not working and they had the luxury to develop asanas and now in the uh, 21st century where most people are not doing physical work, most people need to exercise their muscles and that is one important source of the popularity of yoga. But uh, yoga is a path of salvation whether jnana yoga or um, karma yoga or bhakti yoga or um, surat shabd yoga or we read about siddha yoga of muktanand all of these are paths to salvation. So, is tantra a path of salvation? Tantra is among other things using sex as sexual mysticism mm -hmm. what I call mm -hmm. I have a detailed mm -hmm. article on that mm -hmm. uh, on the internet. Where and can we find that? Article? If you just google Vishal Mangalwadi mm -hmm. and sexual mm -hmm. mysticism mm -hmm. I wrote that when I was uh, the Da Vinci Code was oh. being becoming a movie mm -hmm. I wrote that article that is a good introduction mm -hmm. but I also have material on yoga mm -hmm. which we will mm -hmm. talk about mm -hmm. another time but right now we are looking at the relationship of yoga and tantra. So, uh, yoga has come to def be defined now mm -hmm. as union, mm -hmm. union of soul and God. Mm -hmm. so, he, he, Aham Brahma is mm -hmm. me, Brahma is in me, mm -hmm. my soul is Brahma, but I am a drop, mm -hmm. Brahma is ocean. Mm -hmm. This drop merging into ocean mm -hmm. is how Advaita defines yoga. Mm -hmm. Now, yoga di did not begin with Advaita, mm -hmm. yoga began with Sankhya. Mm -hmm. Sankhya was a dualistic system which said that there are two forces, two realities. One is nature, prakriti, other is soul, purusha. Mm -hmm. Human problem, Sankhya philosophy thought is that body and soul have become intertwined. Mm -hmm. We are confused. You are a soul, mm -hmm. but you think I am a body. Se isolating soul from body. So, you meditate and you have a third eye here, your soul gets out of your body. Mm -hmm. The separation of soul and body was the original function of yoga, mm -hmm. but once uh, what happens when the soul is separated? It is supposed to merge into divine. This is where Advaita took over. So, Advaita believes everything is one. But uh, Sankhya believed uh, in two realities, nature and uh, soul. So, but yoga is also about union. Mm -hmm. You, it is union normally of male and female, through which you transcend maleness and femaleness. Mm -hmm. You realize that the female is within me. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, how, how does that happen? actually a simple way to understand it is through Da Vinci code mm -hmm. or by reading, reading Rajanish mm -hmm. uh, and I can go into the details, but uh, right now the overall point is uh, with response to your question that yoga and tantra on this point of union, mm -hmm. male this is what Rajanish would say, you are born again into the kingdom of God when male and female become one. So, you use sex to experience oneness. Mm -hmm. You have now transcended your normal consciousness of being male or female. Mm -hmm. And uh, in physiology of Tantra, you would say that your Kundalini, your female mm -hmm. energy has been awakened and mm -hmm. it is traveling up and you are getting all of these uh, drug mm -hmm. kind of experiences and then you are merging Shakti and Shiva are merging Kundalini and the male psychic center is merging and you are becoming infinite Brahma. So, uh, Tantra is perceived as a form of yoga mm -hmm. which is using sex uh, to become one with Brahma. Aghoris, they are real outright Tantric. Mm -hmm. So, within Tantra you have two branches, one is right hand tantra, the other is left hand tantra. Mm -hmm. 
right hand tantric are the respectable people like Swami Vivekananda, mm -hmm. who are not aghoris, mm -hmm. because what aghoris do, they realize that sex is not enough. Mm -hmm. You need occult power. Mm. So, you go to the cremation ground, mm -hmm. you dig up the bones, mm -hmm. you drink alcohol or drugs through in human mm -hmm. skull, mm -hmm. you paint your body with mm -hmm. cremation mm -hmm. ashes mm -hmm. of the dead bodies. Mm -hmm. When you have sexual ritual on a cremation ground at night, mm -hmm. the women have are nude, mm -hmm. but they have to put on ashes. Mm -hmm. These are ashes of people who had been cremated. Mm -hmm. So, preferably you have uh, a sexual ritual, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, what Da Vinci code gives a sophisticated face to it, but Aghoris would have the sex in um, uh, cremation ground mm -hmm. with women mm -hmm. who are menstruating mm -hmm. and they would drink the blood in the skull. Now, in, in fact, in some of the American, you can, if you go on the internet, you will watch following the Da Vinci Code, uh, the goddesses. So, they would actually show on um, internet mm -hmm. um, women menstruating, mm -hmm. and you are invited to participate in the ritual of drinking that blood. Mm -hmm. So, th this becomes a you are seeking powers mm -hmm. of the dead people. That's the extreme form of aghoris mm -hmm. who are tantrics, they are sacrificing human beings um, and they are having these public sexual rituals and they are indulging in whatever the, the filthy is. They are eating meat, the kind of meat that is not allowed, they are drinking blood. So, that is the kind of um, environment in which our mothers used to tell us mm -hmm. that you do not go out alone on the street because tantrics are going around, they have these gunny bags, they will kidnap you and they will sacrifice you etcetera. But this is a spectrum, this would be called left hand tantra, uh, the Akhoris would be part of left hand, Vivekananda and Mahatma Gandhi would be right hand tantra, uh, who are cultured, sophisticated, who uh, can can discuss things. So, that is the relationship of yoga and tantra that in the end both are seeking union mm -hmm. and um, tantric mm -hmm. aghoris particularly mm -hmm. are seeking also occult powers mm -hmm. from supernatural. supernatural. Well, so um, if these gurus uh, were having sexual affairs with westerners, so uh, why did so many westerners uh, follow them? Well, the uh, you've heard of the Woodstock Festival mm -hmm. in the 1960s, which begins the countercultural mm -hmm. movement. Mm -hmm. So this countercultural movement is rejecting Christian morality as puritanical. Mm -hmm. That this idea of marriage mm -hmm. is priests, mm -hmm. not who do not want us to have sexual fun. Mm -hmm. We should have free love. So, free love was a very big thing in that hippie movement. We saw them in India as hippies, mm -hmm. but here in America it came to a public mm -hmm. consciousness in a festival called Woodstock. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but so, free love became basically meaningless sex mm -hmm. and it hurt. A woman loves you, she is willing to sleep with you. But she wants love and she wants some permanence because she is a woman, she also wants babies and she wants the husband to be involved in bringing up babies, she wants a home. So, the free love uh, which was sexual revolution became meaningless love and then these gurus offered meaningful sex that yes, yes we permit you to have sex, but we also teach you how you can use sex to become God self-realization. That was one reason why many of these people were attracted to these gurus mm -hmm. like Hare Krishna movement. Um, it focused a lot on uh, Krishna's relationship with the gopis mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Krishna was married to 1400, 1400, 14,000 wives mm -hmm. and the woman who is worshipped with Krishna 
uh, Radha, mm. she is not his wife, mm -hmm. she is a consort. Mm. So, you can have uh, 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 you can have renunciation of family, but you are uh, having this uh, a very sexy uh, God as your God and worship, uh, which is, so uh, this is an attempt to make sex sacred. Mm -hmm. That uh, I'm, we are a bride of God, and uh, God can have thousands and millions of brides. So we we are relationships. So some of the Christian songs also uh, have this ethos of I'm falling in love with Jesus, and uh, which could be very sensual in imagery uh, in, in songs. So. Uh, the immediate answer to your question mm -hmm. about uh, here are these gurus who are having this very uh, loose sexual ethic. Why are people following them? Because the gurus are offering t uh, a, uh, a way mm -hmm. of restoring some pseudo spiritual sac sacredness, <laughs> sacredness that yes you are now mm -hmm. uh, sleeping with a goddess mm. the goddess is initiating you so the prostitute suddenly becomes goddess like in temples uh, yelama or, or devadasi system which was abolished uh, gradually so all the major hindu temples had devadasis they are women dedicated to God. Mm -hmm. So, that happens every year in India now of young women who are dedicated to God and then they have to have sex with the priests and whoever pays for them. So, but this is now no longer sex worker, this is a mistress of God mm -hmm. because she has been married to God first, but then she is sleeping around with mm -hmm. the people. So, this concept of Devadasis was there. Uh, already in India. So, um, th 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 for, for the movement, uh, th there are many other reasons why these um, fo West, Western followers are following these gurus and I am su suggesting that because church abandoned marriage, marriage in the West was the domain of the church. You come before the altar you understand that you are giving yourself to each other in a permanent relationship. Mm -hmm. You kneel down before the altar, you are surrendering your sex life, your physical life, your relationship and you are promising that this is not for one night, this is for life. We will have children, we will look after each other, we will look uh, and we will not have any relationship with anyone else. So, that is once you have offered your sex life to God, you have made it sacred, mm -hmm. it is holy. So, it is called holy matrimony. Mm -hmm. This was the domain of the church and this is uh, Tom Holland is one historian in England uh, who is not a Christian, but he makes this point repeatedly that one of the greatest achievement of Christianity in Europe was to take the pagan sex which was beast like, the Vikings, the Danes are coming invading England, uh, they, they are not bringing their wives, they are raping the local women, s making them slaves. This is what was happening with Islamic conquests that uh, the prophet himself is raiding villages, taking women, making them sex slaves. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, that is where most of the world was, mm -hmm. that y y we are enemies, we are fighting each other, but I go and rape your wife, mm -hmm. your daughters. Mm -hmm. I kidnap them mm -hmm. and I make them my sex slaves. The, the, the Islamic State mm -hmm. was doing this few years ago, uh, ISIS in uh, kidnapping and having sex slaves. But no, in a war you are not to attack women, mm -hmm. you are fighting with combatants, you fight with combatants, you respect women, you respect children who are unarmed and as a soldier your job is to respect and protect the weak and vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Tom Holland makes this point that one of the greatest achievements mm -hmm. of the church 
was to bring sex under the domain of the church, make marriage sacred. Mm -hmm. But by separating, surrendering the domain of marriage to the state, the western church has done a great harm in making sex meaningless, undermining the family. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, many other problems it has created, but uh, there is a long television serial which BBC and Netflix have made. It's called The Last Kingdom. Mm -hmm. The fifth uh, season is just finished, total of 46 episodes. And what you see in that is how the pagan Danish Vikings are invading England. They have, they are brutal, they are powerful, they are invaders, they are coming without their wives. Uh, the strength of the Christian England is marriage, mm -hmm. family. Um, there is a lot of hypocrisy, a lot of sin in the church and amongst the priests and amongst the kings and queens. But basically Christianity wins over paganism because it has civilized sex. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, this, uh, uh, this whole series of 46 episodes of The Last Kingdom, that it, it's adult, there is nudity, there is sex, there is a lot of violence. Mm -hmm. So, my wife does not like watching it, mm -hmm. um, but uh, because it's a conflict of mm -hmm. paganism and Christianity in England, uh, I uh, decided to see it. So, this is historical fiction and uh, the uh, point is that Christianity had invaded pagan Roman, Greco-Roman civilization, mm -hmm. where there was a lot of sexual perversion mm -hmm. and succeeded in civilizing it by domesticating sex, harnessing sexual energy. Mm -hmm. So, when people who are considering women who are complaining that my husband is terrible, I feel like divorcing. Mm -hmm. I say to them that marriage, every woman has to marry a sinner. Mm -hmm. It becomes that woman's responsibility to tame, the sinner is a untamed horse, a wild horse. You love him, he kicks you. You want to ride him, he dumps you down. You hate him, you want to leave him. Well, that is what all your culture and the court is saying that yes, do not stick with him, get rid of him. If you get rid of him, you lose horsepower. If you persist in loving and enduring and taming him, mm -hmm. you have horsepower, your children have horsepower, you have a strong family. So, marriage is a process of taming an untamed wild horse. Uh, and this is what Christianity did. That is why marriage, uh, the, uh, the, this was an issue debated in India from 1850s, uh, 1860s. Uh, Ishwar Chandra Vidya Sagar was one of the first writers who began debating it. Keshav Chandra Sen, the successor of Raja Ram Mohan Roy, who was the big uh, philosopher who de debated this issue, that England is a tiny island. It brings in a few thousand soldiers. Mm -hmm. It colonizes a vast subcontinent from Pakistan to Bangladesh. Keeps it as a colony for 190 years. What made us so weak? What made England so strong? And the conclusion of people like Ishwar Chandra Vidya Sagar, Keshav Chandra Sen, etc., Gokhale, Ranade, etc., came later. The, their conclusion was that. Englishmen are strong because they have only one wife. Mm -hmm. We are weak because we have too many wives. Mm -hmm. So, Ram Mohan Roy, the first Indian mm -hmm. social reformer, the first Indian to use the term Hinduism, accept the term India, etc. He had three wives by the time he was nine years old. Mm -hmm. That is not his fault. He was a Kuleen Brahman. All the men, all the parents wanted to give their daughters to him. So, you have three wives, by the time you are nine year old, you do not know what marriage is, what sex is. Mm -hmm. But this is in fact what has weakened women. This is what has weakened children, mm -hmm. that you are not interested in bringing up your children, you are interested in the next woman. 
So, this is what is being civilized, sexual energy being harnessed to build family, to build strong children and to bring strong, strong economy and strong political system. So, this was understood in the 19th century, although Dr. Ambedkar had to fight from 1948 to 1955 uh, to make it a law that a Hindu male or female can have only one spouse, legal spouse at a time. So, this was strongly resisted by the Congress party mm -hmm. uh, because uh, Ambedkar wanted this written in the constitution, um, but uh, there was so much opposition from the Congress that you are bringing a Christian concept of marriage into Indian law that he was resisted. And, uh, uh, Nehru said to Pandit Nehru, who is the Prime Minister, uh, said to um, Ambedkar that let us uh, wait, let us get the constitution approved, which was approved on the, uh, in January uh, 1950. After that, we will bring a law that requires, that makes it mandatory that one Hindu can have only one spouse. Mm -hmm. In 52, the law was brought by Ambedkar and Congress party resisted it. Nehru tried to, because he had studied in England, he understood. Nehru tried to pressurize the Congress, Congress members of parliament, that if this law does not pass, I will resign, parliament will dissolve, there will be fresh election, I will not give you the ticket, this law must pass. But there was so much pressure put from the Congress party, in, including especially followers of Mahatma Gandhi, that no, 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 we should not bring in this western idea of marriage mm -hmm. into India. In 1952, mm -hmm. when Ambedkar brought the bill, mm -hmm. Hindu Marriage Act, mm -hmm. with con consent of Nehru, mm -hmm. it was Congress party that resisted that and f Nehru tried to bully his party, mm -hmm. but uh, he was the Prime Minister for those who do not know uh, and Ambedkar was not a congressman, he was a republican, he had a republican party in India and uh, he was made law minister because he was a low caste intellectual who had studied law in England and economics in India. So, uh, uh, he was the minister of law with Nehru's Prime Minister's approval, he brought this Hindu Marriage Act. But Nehru became afraid that even if this law passes, our first president Rajendra Prasad, he will not sign it into act. So, this would become very embarrassing that we pass a law which is not signed into act. So, they allowed it to die. So, in 55, 1955, a uh, few months before Ambedkar died, uh, he died in 56, the law uh, was cut up and Hindu Marriage Act was reintroduced and Nehru had ensured that it will be approved. So, that is when it became law that a Hindu can have only one spouse, mm -hmm. a man can have only one wife, a Draupadi can have only one husband if he is alive. Uh, uh, this could not be applied to Islam because Prophet Muhammad had himself allowed four wives to Muslims, he had 13 and he had sex slaves and concubines, but he had allowed four wives you know, because in heaven they will have 70. So, the idea that in paradise God created one woman for one man, one Eve for one Adam, this was not part of the Muslim theology and this was not part of Hindu philosophy, Hindu mythology and therefore, it took 105 years of battle from 18 of 50, 1850 to 1955 to have the Bible's vision of marriage uh, made law for Hindus. Now, Hindus protest that why are Muslims allowed to have four wives in India mm -hmm. legally? Because that creates a problem if a famous film actor like Dharmendar who is already married wants to marry another actress Hema Malini. Uh, he is taking second wife, which Hindu marriage act does not allow. So, both of them have to convert mm -hmm. to Islam, they convert to Islam, mm -hmm. 
then they can have second wife and then if they do that BJP will give them tickets to become members of parliament. So, that is the hypocrisy <laughs> of the Hindutva that Hindutva does not really believe that one man should have only one wife, uh, but they do not want this Hindus to become Muslims in order to marry more than one wife. Mm -hmm. uh, so, many Hindus actually do have more than one wife, but what happens in those situations is that officially the, when the priest who is officiating the woman, second woman, she wants a marriage. So, the man organizes a priest who will have the second marriage ceremony but he will not complete the ritual. Mm -hmm. So, the, the wife and the guest think that he is married, but legally he is not given a second wife to the husband. So, this is happening, but this is all kept discreet uh, because of the hypocrisy in, in Indian media mm -hmm. that you are not investigating these things that here the Hindus are breaking law mm -hmm. of taking second wife, but in Legally, the second wife is actually a mistress mm. because the ritual was never completed according to the priest. Mm -hmm. So, uh, th th this is not just a legal issue, this is a moral issue which the Indian church has to build, find the courage to bring God's will in India that his will should be done and his will is husbands love your wife not your neighbor's wife you be faithful mm -hmm. you love your children mm -hmm. nurture your children so if god's will is to be done in india we have to teach what god's will is and these are sensitive issues these are very big debates because you know, before mahatma gandhi returned to india uh, he, he came back just after the world war 1 started uh, 18, uh, 14 was it or 15, uh, 19, 14, 15. Uh, by end of the century, 1890s or it could have been in 19, 1 or 2 or 3, uh, the Congress uh, annual convention was happening in Pune. Uh -huh. Ranade and Gokhale who were learned judges, they said that it is fine that we as Congress party meet together and every year we pass resolutions against colonialism. What about reforming our own country? Why aren't we ending child marriage? Why aren't we promoting widow remarriage etc etc? Why aren't we opposing polygamy? Um, uh, uh, Tilak, Bal Gangadhar Tilak, he and his followers because he had a big base in Pune, they said that if Congress criticizes Indian culture, we will burn the Congress Mandal. Mm. So, um, the point that this, uh, the idea that one man should have only one wife, because in paradise, mm -hmm. in Eden, mm -hmm. God made one Eve for one Adam, mm -hmm. for two of them to be one in a permanent relationship. That is the way to build strong children. Mm -hmm. If our children are to fill the earth, establish human dominion that requires science, that requires technology, that requires laws, mm -hmm. understanding of economics and lots of things, that is not possible unless the parents are educating their children and not just the parents, but also the grandparents and uncles and aunt that requires stable family. And Indian thinkers such as Keshav Sen understood this that what has made England stronger than us is the fact that an English man has only one wife. Not that they were not fooling many of the English soldiers and traders were not fooling around with Indian women producing illegitimate kids etcetera, but uh, what happened um, uh, as a result of the Fort William College Claudius Buchanan the evangelical movement that uh, from about 1810 uh, onwards, pastors in England, these are poor pastors, mm -hmm. who, they began to send their sons mm -hmm. to become civil servants in India, mm -hmm. deputy collectors, collectors, r judges, engineers. So, it was the pastor's son, they are in a remote village mm -hmm. as a, a small town. 
people are bringing women to them as bribes. These sons know that their parents are praying for them, mm -hmm. praying for them, that they would be holy. Their church is praying for them. They are praying that God would save them from temptation. That's the Lord's prayer. Lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. They are living, many of them compromise with sin. But by and large, the British civil service, which is called the steel frame of India, these are young men in their 20s and early 30s who are not taking bribes, who are not taking women. They are faithful to their wives. They send this signal mm -hmm. to uh, Indian intelligentsia that this is the source of the strength of the British character of which um, we should imbibe. So, when Indians come into civils, begin to come into civil services, that also happens because of the evangelical movement mm -hmm. that the whole reason for bringing university movement to India was that India will have graduates who will take over civil services and learn to govern themselves. Mm -hmm. But that training of civil services included moral training, character training. As you are going into the remote areas, the criminals will bribe you to get away with their criminal activities. But you have to be content. Godliness with contentment is a great gain. Do not look for illicit gain. So, most of these young people died early. Some of them retired with very modest uh, pensions, etc. The whole idea that these all of these Englishmen were looting us is a foolishness, which uh, people who are ignorant are in the early phase, before the evangelicals began to train the civil service, the military, the engineers. Um, in the early phase, yes, riffraff of British society came to India, they looted, they raped etcetera. Uh, they took a lot of bribes. But once the evangelical movement realized that God did not give India to us so that we can loot India, but God gave India to us so that we might bless India. And then the pastors began to send their young people. That is what changed India. That is what created modern India. And my older generation, they always told us the British were not corrupt. Mm -hmm the British that they had seen, they were not corrupt. That does not mean that uh, in after uh, 17, uh, 1757 was the uh, 47, uh, 57 was the battle of Plassey, 1764 after the battle of Buxar, the mm -hmm. English began to rule Bengal, which included Assam, Orissa, Bihar, Bangladesh. Uh, at that time, there was a lot of corruption. But then the kingdom of God began to change the British rule and began to change India. And one of the big changes that was brought to India by the word of God was the biblical idea of marriage, which now the West is losing because the West has turned its back against, uh, against the Bible. And the problem, bigger problem than the courts is the American church. American church does not realize that God's will has to be done on this earth. Marriage, sexuality has to be brought under God's authority. Marriage is our domain. Government does not know what marriage is. Mm -hmm. You cannot have, you, you, the church cannot hand over the domain of marriage to the state and say this is not our responsibility if people are living together. Mm -hmm. No. Purity, sexual purity is church's domain. Mm -hmm. So, um, that is a long answer to your mm -hmm. short question, but uh, sorry for taking well, that long. Well, well. So, um, let us talk about uh, the sexual revolution and uh, homosexuality, I mean LGBTQ. So, uh, you can talk on that form. Okay. So, uh, to go back. Mm -hmm. Sexual revolution in America, in, in the West, mm -hmm. begins with Darwin. Mm -hmm. In 1859, Darwin writes his book, uh, Origin of Species, where he is suggesting that human beings originated You mean from sexual revolution, not homosexuals? No. Okay. So, I am making a distinction yes, between sexual revolution mm -hmm. 
and homosexuality. Okay. Wonderful. So, so the idea mm -hmm. that human beings are animals. Mm -hmm. In 1864, mm -hmm. Darwin writes a second book. Mm -hmm. That is called Expressions of Emotions mm -hmm. in Man and Animals. Mm -hmm. That not only human body evolved from animals, human emotions evolved from animals. So these are instincts, mm -hmm. these are chemical reactions. So, love is chemistry, ultimately, it boiled down to that. So, uh, human love is really animal mm -hmm. instinct, mm -hmm. evolved version of it. Mm -hmm. This is what it, it means that there is no soul. Mm -hmm. Marriage is not union of two souls making commitment mm -hmm. that even when I feel like hating you, feel like killing you, I will actually love you and serve you by God's grace. Uh, when you are sick, you cannot satisfy my sexual needs and desires, I will still love you and serve you. That is the commitment that you are making before God, that I am accepting this woman as my wife and she is saying I am accepting this man as my husband for good or for ill, mm -hmm. for riches or for poverty, in sickness or in health. Whether this relationship is fun or pain, I am mm -hmm. going to endure the pain. Mm -hmm. So, this concept that two are becoming one before God. So help me God, I know that marriage is not possible. Today is my 47th wedding anniversary. Uh, how can an intelligent woman live with a fallen man for 47 years? Uh, it is possible only by grace alone, uh, that you, you need God's grace to love when you do not feel like loving, when you feel like hating. Now, uh, so, but no, this is priest, this is puritanism, this is what the foolish western press and intellectuals began to say. This is puritanism. The uh, priests do not want you to have fun mm -hmm. in the college, and you know, they do not want you to have orgies and multiple relationships. So, they require that uh, you should remain virgin until you are married mm -hmm. and you should remain faithful only to this one husband after you are married. This is restraining human sexuality. Reject this. That was sexual revolution as an, and as I mentioned that uh, on Freud, uh, you have Kinsey report, then you have Playboy empire, which brings a revolution. The Playboy uh, magazine, because it always had topless women, uh, pastors could not buy it. If they bought it secretly and looked at those pictures secretly, this is before pornography became available on the internet, they could not talk about it. Every issue of Playboy had a serious one or two serious scientific articles. This was pseudoscience, but that was the only teaching on sex that American men were getting and it, and the church was not teaching because you have already abandoned education, schooling and university to the state or to capitalistic greed. You are not educating your children about what is sexuality, what is love, what is marriage, what is divorce. State has the monopoly and in between this playboy uh, empire is corrupting, giving an appearance that the science says mm -hmm. that we should not be repressing our sexual urges, that we should not stay faithful to just one wife etcetera or one husband. So, this was sexual revolution, but as I said that the problem came that this made sexual relationship meaningless. Mm -hmm. That is where Hindu gurus stepped in and did what Gnosticism had done mm -hmm. uh, centuries ago, mm -hmm. the time, time of Paul. Mm -hmm. So, we, we can talk about yes. Gnosticism, sexual mysticism and that gave a very deceptive uh, 
idea of how to make sex sacred. Mm -hmm. So, Da Vinci Code is, uses that word mm -hmm. sacred sex a lot, uh, but that was the only voice that was becoming available because the church was accepting uh, legal court marriage. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the church should have been saying that look, we do not accept courts marriage because the court and the government has no right over the domain of marriage and family. God creates family. So, as far as the church is concerned, you are not married unless you come bow before God, uh, take an oath of remaining faithful to each other in a permanent relationship etcetera. So, the church has to fight back to regain the control of this whole sphere of marriage and family, which the American church is not doing, because what it wants is antichrist to come and rule and the rapture to happen, not that uh, we are in a warfare where God's will should be done on us. So, uh, there are this theological issues in uh, mo most of the world, which spread out of America, a particularly particular view of uh, what is God's will, what is mission, um, but this harnessing of sexual energy is the primary responsibility to build great nations. So, Abraham for example, he sends his wife Sarah to Pharaoh, to Abimelech, to kings. Why? because he has gone to Egypt, Pharaoh hears that he has a beautiful woman in his tent. Oh, I hear that you have a beautiful woman in your tent, why is she in your tent, why not in my harem? Mm -hmm. Abraham asks her, please go to his harem. He is a coward, mm -hmm. but he is a realist because the message from the king has come with 10 soldiers who have swords. So, either she goes willingly or she goes with his head. He says, you know, leave my head here, you please go. Once he has given his own wife to the kings into their harem, he has no problem by accepting concubines. Mm -hmm. Sarah herself is saying, Okay, I went to Pharaoh, you take Hagar mm -hmm. and then he has another concubine, Katura and other concubines. The problem with that is uh, later, mm -hmm. uh, God says to Abraham, you get rid of that slave woman and her son. Mm -hmm. Why? God is very mean, mm -hmm. very hard hearted. Well, the reason is God knows, Abraham knows, everybody knows that Hagar will ask Ishmael to kill Abraham, kill Isaac, mm -hmm. otherwise he is not going to inherit his father's mm -hmm. state. He is the first born, he will not get his father's state, mm -hmm. father will give it to Isaac and Isaac will become old enough by the time he is 20, uh, it will be very difficult to kill him because he will have the men around him. Isaac is the chosen one, send Hagar and Ishmael away. Now, this is not theory. Delhi was often ruled by slave dynasties mm -hmm. because queens and sons were not allowed to come near the throne. Mm -hmm. Only eunuchs were allowed to come near the throne and often the kings had sexual relationships homosexual homosexuality was very prevalent in Delhi. We have information about Delhi, we do not have a lot of information about Hindu kings and kingdoms. So, slaves would acquire power, sons were a problem. Shah Jahan is building Taj Mahal and then he is planning to, and he sucked all the wealth from North India, then he is building the second Taj Mahal on the other side of the uh, Yamuna river. Aurangzeb arrests his father, throws his father into prison to become the king. This is what sons do mm -hmm. to get the throne. This is the implication of polygamy. Polygamy and prosperity do not go together. So, 
God is saying Abraham will surely become a great nation because he will teach his children and his household, ethne and non-ethne, to walk in my ways, to do what is just, what is right, which means respect your father and your mother, not kill your fathers for property, etc. So, uh, so as Abraham is give, asked to give up these multiple wives to be faithful to his old wife, old woman, who is not in, as interesting as these young concubines. God is in, reintroducing that my original vision for man was for one Adam to have one Eve, which is what then in the New Testament begins to say that um, it, it, lots of pagans are becoming Christian, they have many wives and we are not asking them to get rid of their wives, but they can't become elders and deacons in the church if they have more than one wife, because you have to model that this is God's ideal. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, so, that is how uh, the, uh, the God's word and the church begins to bring sex life under God's discipline. So, um, to, um, to, to conclude, mm -hmm. uh, answer your question, sexual revolution is naturalistic sex, mm -hmm. sex as animal. What Hinduism brings after uh, 1960s with through the hippies, through the gurus, the idea that sex can be used to become God, spiritualizing sex. That is what I am saying that the modern acceptance of homosexuality is altering the world view of the West, mm -hmm. because the church is trying to save souls. It is not educating the world to shape the world view. What really is sex? What really is marriage? How do you build great nations? Um, Christians scoff at the idea of building great nation, but that is God's purpose. He is saying to Abraham, you follow me, I will bless you, I will make you a great nation, because I want to bless all the nations and make them great nations. So, that's, uh, that perspective has disappeared from much of the understanding of western mission, mm -hmm. that what is mission, what is the great commission, why are we discipling nations not just saving souls. Uh, and that has created these problems, weakened the church, which calls for a new reformation, new understanding. But that is again a lo very long answer to your simple question, but I hope it clarifies so, uh, my final question is uh, like, you know, in ancient India, uh, lines uh, dividing male and female and uh, heterosexual uh, from homosexual, it was blurred. Uh, so, these deals were told without guilt or shame and are not uncommon by any means. Uh, so, um, where do these uh, 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 stories stem from? Okay, well, that's a very helpful question because a um, lot of my emphasis has mm -hmm. been since 1960s and 70s mm -hmm. the countercultural movement, mm -hmm. hippie movement, mm -hmm. guru movement, mm -hmm. new age. Mm -hmm. uh, but in fact, the problem doesn't begin there. The uh, the the this sexual uh, not knowing. Mm -hmm that my sex life should be surrendered to God mm -hmm. is a perennial problem, mm -hmm. because you have two different ways of understanding it. One is, let us consider the possibility that man actually was an animal and animals do not marry. Mm -hmm. So, marriage was a later invention of the priests, mm -hmm. that you cannot sleep with everyone's mm -hmm. wife, because that results in a lot of fights. So, you just love your own wife, love your own children. So, the priests brought this concept of marriage mm -hmm. later and this meant marriage between a man and a woman. But what is male and what is female remains a philosophical problem. Mm -hmm. 
so today a lot of people who are influenced by Carl Jung, mm -hmm. I talked about him, they would see that Adam was not a historical man. So, th th this is Christian theologians who are Jungian. Adam is not a historical male, a finite being. Adam is a primordial human consciousness mm -hmm. out of which emerge e emerges Eve as a finite woman and Adam as a finite man. Uh, that raises other problems which we, I will discuss. What is male and female in animal world? What is male and female in the plant world? Uh, world? Is human being just a consciousness or is there flesh and blood? That God takes clay, makes Adam, breathes into him his spirit. So, Adam has a physical component which includes sexuality, mm -hmm. but it also transcends sexuality to become love because God's spirit which is love has been breathed into Adam. So, uh, so, so there is philosophical problem and without revelation why are we male and female? How did we come about? There are no answers, so there are speculations that either you have Jungian spec speculations or Darwinian speculation that we were apes and uh, we uh, became um, human beings human who uh, now marry and are faithful to each other, the husband and wife. So, you have lots of scientific, pseudo scientific, psychological speculations, or you have revelation mm -hmm. of how male and female were created. So, so the biblical picture to repeat uh, is in the beginning, God created heavens and the earth, spirit of God was hovering over the waters, mm -hmm. the word of God began to create. Mm -hmm let there be light, mm -hmm. let us make man in our image. So, there is father, there is spirit, there is son, the word of God. Three are one, tri trinity. This triune God says, let us make man in our image, male and female, for two of them to be one, so that they become three, family, bound together by love. I am God's image. I become more of God's image when I choose to love my wife, become one with her. When two of us become three, I become more like God and because as I said in the main episode, two o'clock in the morning, my wife wakes me up, I am fast asleep. She says, baby is crying, you please get up and change the napkin and give the milk and make sure that the child burps. So, I have to get up because I want to love my wife. She's working 24 hours, looking after the baby, I am fast asleep, I do not even hear the baby's cry, but I change the diapers, I clean up the baby, I warm the milk, I uh, feed the milk and I take the baby, uh, walk up and down until she is burped and is ready to sleep. Now, uh, this is when I am learning the mother heart of God, mm -hmm. the father heart of God, I am mm -hmm. becoming like God. Mm -hmm. So, it is family, tri trinity. Mm -hmm which makes me like God. Mm -hmm. It sanctifies me. It teaches me to sacrifice myself as God would sacrifice his son for me, for my salvation, to give life, to build up my children. So, now I can no longer love my wife. I love my secretary or my colleague. Is this sin? God has said you should love your wife, not your neighbor's wife. Mm. So, this concept of sin requires God's law, God's word that husbands love your wife, not your neighbor's wife. If sin has come mm -hmm. and Adam and Eve are no longer in God's image, they are fallen, they are like their father, the devil. Uh, and many husbands do become like that, uh, uh, which leads to divorce. You, you have a real problem that if you do not believe in sin, 
how do you understand this difficulty of sustaining a marriage, loving someone who is so difficult to love. So, your question about how did these stories come uh, about is that without God's revelation of who is man, what is man, why am I male, what is fe femaleness, what is marriage, what is love, you have to then invent stories. So, let us say uh, one of our gods is Ganesh. Uh, the with an elephant head mm. because Shiva comes or Shankar comes to Parvati visit Parvati. Parvati is bathing she has said to her son do not let anyone come in. So, he says you cannot come in he does not know his father father does not know the son because father visits, visits Parvati once in a while. Parvati is not Shankar's or Shiva's wife she is his consort. So, he comes he does not recognize this is my son and when the son is saying you cannot go in my mother is bathing he chops off his head. Parvati comes she is very angry uh, that you do not know you have killed your own son. So, an elephant is passing by he chops off the elephant's head he puts it on Ganesh and he is a god with elephant head. My problem is why does not the father who is a god know his son? Mm -hmm. Why does not the son know his father? Because there is no family there. Why does the god ha not have a wife, but have consort? This is these priests who are not married because they have renounced marriage because marriage requires accepting the fact that I am finite, I am not infinite, I need my wife, it is not good for man to be alone, mm -hmm. I need my helpmate, I need uh, um, my wife to, to be complete. When you do not have this word of God, this revelation from God that this is what marriage is. Then you begin to invent stories because these priests who do not want to take the sages, who do not want to take responsibility for a woman and the children, they invent these stories to uh, satisfy their needs, sexual needs included. So, your question how did these stories including stories of sexual re, homosexual relationship like uh, Shiva and Vishnu uh, uh, having sexual union, Vishnu has taken the female form of Mohini giving birth to Ayappa and because he is a product of all male two male gods and he is a male females are not allowed to go into his temple during annual festival. How did all of these stories develop? These stories developed because now sinful sages who have renounced marriage are inventing mythology to um, um, justify the sinful nature. So, in this discussion a discussion of the question of sin is very important sin is not acceptable, the idea of sin is not acceptable in the west or in India, because to accept the idea that we are sinners who need grace, who need salvation, you have to accept that there is a God who has spoken, he has given his word. So, revelation becomes very important and um, um, without revelation, we have nothing but speculative myths. So, you have a culture built upon myth and these myths Carl Jung would say, Joseph Campbell would say uh, that these myths are human attempt to know truth. Socrates knew better, Buddha knew better, Paul knew better, he Martin Luther knew better that these myths are not there in search of truth. These myths are there to enslave us, enslave women. I can give more illustrations, 
but I think this is enough for now that uh, Socrates was killed because he was challenging the myths of Greek city states. The Buddha rejects uh, the myths that Brahmins have created in India uh, and he says that these myths are later of course, Buddhism develops its own myths, but Buddha rejects myths. Paul and Socrates and the Buddha are more or less contemporaries, Paul comes later, but he sees how myths have enslaved Europe. Truth liberates, myths enslave. So, Paul is asking Timothy and Titus to challenge stories to challenge mythology uh, because teach the truth. Church is the pillar and foundation of the truth. It is teaching of the truth that transforms, that liberates. So, uh, this is um, the uh, long answer to your question. How did these stories come? These stories came because the notion of revelation that God has spoken and he has revealed truth to us that is rejected. So, we are going back into the age of mythology. Notion of sin is rejected because if there is no word from God, there is no sin. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, uh, we still have to make sense of reality. So, we begin to speculate and imagine and call our imagination uh, science. This is what Freud is doing when he is requiring Carl, requiring Carl Jung uh, to teach that uh, uh, sexual fantasies and urges should not be repressed, they should be expressed. Mm -hmm. So, if a, woman, a girl wants to have sex with her father, she should not repress it, father should express. Uh, so this is where the West is being enslaved. Mm -hmm by mythology which Freud sold as science. That is the heart of what I am saying in that main presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you.